Good morning, good evening and welcome back to World of Warships. My name is Robin and today we will be sailing and reviewing the Etietan Italian heavy cruiser Venezia. But first of all, thank you very much for tuning in the video. I really appreciate it and I hope you would enjoy your time here. I have just recently watched the Venezia review from Potato Quality and it inspired me to send her to battle once again. Not only does this cruiser boast some striking looks, it also surprised me on how devastating it can be in the right situation. I have been trying to get content with that specific tier 10 cruiser in the past but never quite could make it work. Effort had to be put in to understand what this ship can and cannot do and I have to admit that after a few games running one specific build I was left wondering why on earth didn't I review her in the past? So without further ado, let's check out the details of this gorgeous yet deadly vessel. Venezia brings 51,800 hit points to the fight with an armor thickness ranging from 6 to 165 mm and boasting a torpedo protection of 28%. The main battery consists of 15 203mm guns in 5 triple turrets, firing at a range of 17.1 km with a reload time of 18.5 seconds. The ship also comes equipped with long-range torpedoes, albeit only 6 tubes in 2 triple launchers and can reach an impressive top speed of 38.4 knots. 17.6 km by sea and 11.4 km by air are the ranges at which Venezia will be spotted. For the upgrades I've installed we have Main Armaments, Modification 1, Damage Control System, Modification 1, Aiming System, Modification 1, Steering Gears, Modifications 1 and 2, with Main Battery, Modification 3. For my commander, we have assigned the unique commander Luigi Sansonetti with the following skills. Grease the gears, swift fish, gun feeder, last stand, consumable enhancements, priority target, heavy HE and ACP shells, AR, superintendent and top grade gunner. The most attentive of you will notice that I am running some sort of lighthouse build as said in the warship slang, meaning that I've foregone any concealment improvements outside of my camouflage to focus on agility and main battery reload. With that setup, our concealment range is actually longer than our actual main gun range which I found hilarious, though it means that the top grade gunner skill will be active at all times as as long as we are in range of an enemy ship. But that's enough of these descriptions, we have one damn good game ahead of us to review, so without further ado, let's take Venezia to battle. And here we are, on the map Ice Island Epicenter Mode. We got ourselves a central spawn and I will use the Venezia's impressive speed to set myself up in a nice position. This ship is a very interesting cruiser when it comes to survivability. You do not have the best armor out of tier 10 cruisers by far, but your deck and casemate are plated in 30mm on top of having an icebreaker covering the lower part of your bow. And luckily for us, all battleships present in the enemy team are unable to overmatch that. Venezia is also surprisingly nimble for a cruiser this size, so if you have some basic situational awareness, you can angle yourself very efficiently against large caliber AP. The build we are running today is going to request just that. I expect to be spotted pretty much all the time, which is the core principle of this lighthouse setup. This is also a CV game, Midway vs Hakuryu, unfortunately for us because Venezia does not boast a particularly good anti-air defense system and planes will spot us from a very long range. Trade-off on the other hand is that our guns will fire every 16 seconds instead of the 18.5 we have on paper and that is why this build is so interesting. SAP slaps, it really does. The alpha damage on these shells combined with the heavy HE and sap skill can make Venezia hit harder than she already does by default, as long as you aim correctly of course. The sap has very decent muzzle velocity, but the drag at range makes your salvo land shorter than you anticipated, if you don't take this into account. 
But back to the fight at hand. We have been spotted for a while now and have put ourselves in a reversed kiting position. Alsace has taken interest on me and we've been trading some salvos already. The 17.1 km of range is very limiting, but the ship also comes equipped with a spotter plane, which we have already been using. Simply using my speed, we have been avoiding salvos from the French battleship as well from a very far out Izumo on the one line. This position is quite safe, though I am still keeping a close eye on my priority target. Izumo is actually going to land the first hit on us. Fortunately, nothing too critical, considering we were flat broadside. And I am ready to either create more distance or even use my smoke if needed. But this is still very early in the game. We need to be cautious on how and when we use our consumables. For now, trading with the Alsace, which we've just hit for over 20,000 damage already, is just fair game. Considering that my spotter plane is landing and that I will be out of range, I decided to press forward and turn around to re-engage as soon as I can. But within that time frame, our only destroyer goes down first. What can you say? It is a tier 8 destroyer in a tier 10 matchmaker with a carrier present and our Kagero was trying to play the objective, how unfortunate of her. All of this to say, we are not off to a great start. Assessing the enemy's team early deployment on the minimap, I decide that this flank is not really in any trouble. Outside the enemy Izumo and Napoli, no ships will be pushing up here anytime soon, so I decide to make my way to the center with an interest on the other flank where a Conqueror and Pommen are pushing. Crawling smoke, spotted in the distance, Napoli is making a break for it, so I switched to AP in case she gets revealed. By that time, we have lost yet another ship, the Alexander Nevsky, and the enemy team has secured the outer ring, further increasing the point difference. An enemy Asashio has been spotted pushing the 10 line, but with our current setup, that is without radio location, we are not really able to do anything that our CV cannot do instead. As soon as we start pushing back into the action though, well, we are instantly spotted, our build working as intended. It's only a Zitten, but I do want to push inside the outer circle, to at least contest it, so this will be the first use of our smokescreen. One of the downside I see with that setup, outside of the fact that, well, you're constantly visible, is that you cannot really tell who or what is spotting you, starving you of sometimes crucial information on potential enemy ships' positions. Meanwhile, we are happily shooting out of our smoke and landing some pretty good damage on the German battlecruiser. If aimed at a lightly armored part, an SAP salvo can reliably yield within the ranges of 10,000 damage. You have seen it on the Alsace before and you will keep on seeing it on other ships. Yet another friendly ship goes down though, and now shit is getting serious. Chapayev, on the other hand, is in a terrible situation, and there is one type of ship that ASAP likes to punish, that is light cruisers. I preemptively switched to armor piercing, thinking Chapayev would try to make a break for it and show broadside, but the cruiser decides to reverse out and make a stand. A gun feeder, and we are back to ASAP, ASAP, pun intended. We have made our way to the second circle, and our smokescreen has gone on cooldown. Spotted, but angled, I am going to remain here for a few moments, try and contest the cap, and trade some salvos, all the while being ready to press forward and disengage, if needed. We narrowly avoided an AP salvo from Carnot, but we are holding our grounds with only Chapayev returning fire on us. Our aim is not optimal right now though, we have been missing a few salvos that could have dealt much more damage, but I want to remain here and finish off Chapayev before setting up to help out our Alabama, which I know is currently being chased by Asashio, but mostly to try and prevent Conqueror and Pommen from completing their pincer moves. 8000 salvo on the Russian cruiser, 
I expect the next one to finish him off, but we are not getting there just yet. And as we adjust our aim to compensate for the acceleration, we finally bag the first kill of the game and from our team, all the while focusing our anti-air against the midway torpedo bombers. Getting that kill is a good bonus though. We have triggered one of the talents of Sansonetti, which increases your firing range as soon as you get a kill. This will compensate for the rather crippling range we have started with and we can now work with a bit more leeway. Unfortunately, the enemy team destroys our Kremlin, maintaining the ship difference to 3. We do have a better hold of the caps for now, but without any destroyers on our team anymore, the enemy are starting to push back from the south and we have other matters to attend, that is countering the German and British battleships as we planned. They did not wait for me to get the optimal position and we have to start turning away because, well, pushing into a secondary riddled battleship backed up by a superheel conqueror isn't a particularly good idea. The good thing is at least that Pommern is not very healthy. I am trying to set myself at an angle from both my shooting side and the south part of the map where virtually every other enemy ships are and once again keeping an eye out on my PT. Although I do not wish to start kiting away again, and seeing that the Pommern is holding its push, that's my cue to actually burn my smoke and start closing up the distance again. As we maneuver, we are about to hit our 100th shell of the game, triggering yet another talent from our commander that increases the consumable duration, giving us a few extra seconds on smoke deployment, how convenient. The inconvenient part is that I failed to take the Asashio into consideration, and while the Japanese destroyer is little to no threat to me, as her torpedoes go right under us, she still has the ability to spot me through my smoke due to my penalty from firing, and that is not ideal. Even less so, considering Pommern was undetected, and I kinda had to turn away once again when both battleships trained their guns on me. Knowing that I would give broadside to both, I preemptively activated my repair party, expecting to get citadeled, but we get lucky, not only by receiving minimal damage, but also by enticing the Pommern to shoot us and reveal his position. Only a couple of salvos should be enough to take out the German battleship at this point, and we successfully do so on our second shot right after he went dark. This leaves only the Conqueror and Asashio, but that's kind of irrelevant to us, on this upper flank, and our team isn't doing too bad now. The enemies still have the point advantage, but so far no one has been able to take a hold of the center, despite the heroic, albeit questionable, decision of our ruin to sail right down the middle and get summarily destroyed shortly thereafter. But for now, we are sending it on the Conqueror. To my surprise, the British battleship, in true display of Royal Navy behavior of ignoring the Italians while focusing the Germans, is not even paying attention to me, and I am able to close the distance rapidly, all the while chunking at its HP with superstructure pens. We lose yet another battleships and things are starting to look quite grim, although these kind of games are far from a certain defeat even at this point, we just need to start crawling back from the hole we dug ourselves into. With almost no resistance, we are able to quickly finish off Conqueror after dealing substantial damage to its extremity that we could easily penetrate at an angle with our SAP. But now it is time to go on the offensive. Our Alsace is going to come under fire from two American light cruisers, a tier 10 Worcester and the tier 9 Seattle. I know full well that I have to assist my French battleship as she stands no chance in that fight, especially with the enemy carrier now in play on this flank. Speaking of which, the midway is actually going to get spotted, and much closer than I thought he would have been. This is a priority target for me, even if I need to focus on the cruisers as they still put my Alsace in danger. 
In that situation, I wish that our battleships would understand the occasion to try and focus down the carrier, as we are desperately in need of points and that taking out the midway would alleviate a lot of pressure on our team. On her own flank, our Hakuryu is busy defending herself against a charging Kano, and I do not have any clue of where Asashio could be currently. She is putting all of our battleships in peril, but that is something we cannot even help on right now. What we can do is punish these cruisers. AP loaded, expecting to catch Seattle broadsided, but she angles just in time and we switch back to the reliable SAP. I tried to put some damage on the midway, but at this angle and range we've only just tickled him. Though as we charge in to find better angles on our target, we find ourselves exposed to the enemy Alsace that made her way to the center, and that will cue the use of our last smoke. Confederate triggers as we land more hits on the Worcester, which will further decrease the reload time of our guns. That is most of the talents of Sansonetti activated now and we are getting the full benefits of our unique commander. But we can only rejoice for so long as our Alsace goes down, leaving us as the only active ship on this flank with now the undivided attention of both US cruisers, but more importantly, the enemy carrier. Torpedoes in the water towards some last known positions and I can take some pot shots at Alsace from the safety of my smoke while I avoid some inconvenient terrain. 10,000 damage once again, reliable salvos if you know where to hit, but we cannot make full use of that situation as the Alsace goes dark and by the time she is lit up again we need to focus back on cruisers. Just like clockwork though, we catch the Worcester broadsided and the US light cruiser is about to experience what is known as pain. 10 out of 12 shells connected without a single shutter for a whooping 13,000 salvo, basically closing the paragraph of this particular enemy ship as soon as our guns reload. Fourth kill of the game and we have managed to clear out our surroundings a bit. We are still in a definite disadvantage in terms of points and ships though, and to make matters worse, the midway is going to catch us with a nasty torpedo salvo, essentially hitting all but one and forcing our damage control. We are trying to retaliate, but for some reason our SAP is not doing nearly as much damage as I expected it to. I'm not sure whether or not our aim was poor, on top of the fact that I'm not familiar with most CV's armor plating, but any hopes of killing that CV quickly evaporates as Midway smartly maneuvers to angle in and mitigate even more damage. We do evade the dive bombers as our anti-air actually shoots down some of them, but I know that Midway will just keep on coming as long as I am a threat to his ship, which I obviously am. Izumo is also coming back in play, making any maneuvers I attempt against the CV even more perilous, even if for now the Japanese battleship is focused on other targets. Although, right now, with the damage we took, the top grade gunner skill and the talent of Sansonetti triggered by the confederate achievement, our guns are reloading within 13 seconds. <laughs> 13 seconds on 15 SAP shells, that is downright terrifying. Even though the damage displayed is not worth the paper, the potential damage they could do is printed on. At least it seems the rest of my team is now also engaging the midway from another angle. But it seems both carriers in both teams are somewhat in trouble. On the other flank, our Hakuryu has managed to escape her rather precarious position, only to later be ambushed by the enemy Asashio, which took the time to sail all the way to the A-line. So our Japanese carrier merely turns back around again and starts sailing south again. We are taking a lot of unnecessary damage from Midway's torpedoes though. Being greedy to bring all our guns to bear, we are turning into torps we could have easily avoided otherwise, but I just really want that CV gone, as you can tell. The enemy team realizes this and send out their Seattle to intercept me. 
Izumo thankfully still isn't bothered by our presence, which allows us to focus our attention on the US light cruiser, especially after landing 8000 damage and earning the high caliber medal. One ship we haven't kept track of this game was the enemy Napoli and she is spotted right next to Izumo. This is important information as we know our most direct threat is now Seattle, with the enemy Midway finally succumbing to fires set by our friendly Marlboro. Salvo out on Seattle and yet another 10,000 damage, just to send out the warning that picking up a fight with us while showing flat broadside isn't a very good idea. Incoming last drop from the Midway's bombers, this is the last damage we will take from the CV and it was already plenty. We sent out our torpedoes to try and give Seattle something else to dodge and I am keeping an eye out on Izumo. Enemy Alsace is on a direct interception course for our CV with Asashio still coming up her rear and our battleships are finally making a push for the center. Seattle, as brave as ever, licked some of his wounds behind the island only to come out swinging again. But I've made the mistake of loading AP and we deal minimal damage as he angles away. Bit too much of an angle actually as the Seattle proceeds to run aground. We know we can win that fight and get our Kraken. The issue now turns out to be Izumo, but we are managing to keep an island between him and our ship, rendering him unable to hit us even if he wanted to while we deal with Seattle over there. Unfortunately, the score is 850 to 300 points in the enemy's favor, and with only a minute and a half left on the timer, nothing but a miracle could turn this game around. Our secondaries are going to set some fires on Seattle while we struggle to finish him off with our main guns and that secures our Kraken with 250,000 damage dealt. Next is of course Izumo. Shortly thereafter, Marlboro manages to sink the Napoli and for the very first time this game we are back in the lead in terms of ships. Have we had a few more minutes on the timer this game could have been turned around in one great comeback but that will not happen. We are mitigating the damage against Izumo's return fire, putting the casemate armor to work here, but we are out of heal and the 11k HP we have are all we got. No more smokes either, and as the timer starts counting down the last seconds of the game, we are setting up for one last rush on the Japanese battleship. Marlboro and the surviving Alabama are actually going to capture all three zones of the epicenter. Once again in vain, but good for them on getting that extra XP. And hello Izumo, I am here and you have 20 seconds to kill me. Yet another triple digit salvo, piling on to the damage we've already dealt so far. Though by the time we are able to bring our guns to bear again for one last salvo, Izumo has us locked in and we get taken out, closing the chapter of this game in a defeat. 284,000 damage dealt, close to 10,000 XP earned and almost 900,000 credits gained. We achieved Confederate, Kraken unleashed and high caliber out of 337 shells and two fires, shooting down 23 planes, defending bases 14 times and sinking five ships in the process. 2100 base XP on a defeat, coming second of all players in terms of base XP earned. I will take this any day, even though there remains a bittersweet feeling from this game, as a win could have been possible would some event had unfolded differently. Enemy Alsace though goes back to port with a whooping 53 planes shot down and a carrier kill. Regardless of the outcome, I tried my best to give this ship a chance to shine against these odds and I hope that such display was a good example of how Venija can be commanded. Well, people, this video is coming to an end. Thank you very much for watching it all the way through. 
I would actually like to thank every single one of you for the support throughout the year and also for being so patient about my unreliable upload schedule. I hope you enjoyed this full commentary and if you did, it would help me a great deal to give the video a thumbs up. If you did not, well, thumbs down, but stay tuned anyway. As always, there will be more content to come about World of Warships. Until then, you have a good one and you take it easy.